thanks everybody. And it's really great to hear some familiar uh, voices on the phone, Peter McLaren, Doug Paulson, and Jody, of course. And so just want to say thank you for inviting us both to share with you today. Um, I, I, I've crossed paths with some of you probably before, either with presidential awards um, at NSF when I was an Einstein Fellow or at the Maryland State Department of Education when I led STEM education there. But great to be back in the STEM education world and working with awesome colleagues like Carol uh, from the Smithsonian. Um, so Carol, you probably know this group better than I do, but do you want to introduce yourself? Uh, sure. So um, Carol O'Donnell, and I am an affiliate member of CS Cubed, which I'm very um, appreciative of, and um, a director of what's called the Smithsonian Science Education Center at the Smithsonian, and former U.S. Department of Education um, person. Yeah. Okay. So as you might know, um, I'm back. I'm back in the. Uh, DC area now and work at the White House Office of Science and Technology Policy. I'm the Assistant Director of STEM Education and Senior Policy Advisor for STEM there and co-chair the FC STEM, which stands for Federal Coordination of STEM Education, along with Mike Kincaid from NASA Office of STEM Engagement and Karen Marangel from NSF EHR. So it's great to work with them, great to work with the FC STEM community. Um, as you might imagine, there's been a lot more collaboration lately in trying to figure out how to solve various things occurring with the current state of events. And um, I did want to give NSCA a special shout out for all that you've done in opening your, your, your doors to the resources that you have to teachers and the membership. And so Jody, please, uh, please share my gratitude for that. That's been incredibly helpful to teachers around the country. So you all have done uh, great work there. Um, I also wanted to mention an effort that we had been working on, and it's a, a website that we work on with SIIA, which is a technology association. Um, it, it's called techforlearners.org, and the four is F-O-R, not a number. So that might be something to share with educators. It, there's probably about three, over 300 websites. Um, it was built quickly, so it's not, uh, it's not deluxe or anything, but there are some search features by grade band, by content area. And so hopefully there's something there that can be helpful to your stakeholders that you work with. So um, with that in mind, I know we've got limited time, but uh, if we can go to slide number two, why a federal strategic plan for STEM. Um, I think most of you know this, this came about as the America Compete Reauthorization Act of 2010. Um, but really, I think it's really important to have some direction because you're not going to know if you make a difference if you don't have something to kind of measure it by. And so some of you may have been involved in the development of this. Um, I know OSTP held a, a STEM event in May 2018, I believe, and I know some of you were there. Um, I was not, but that really uh, brought together stakeholders to build this strategic plan. Uh, and then also to serve not only the federal government, but the broader STEM community. So if we can go to the next slide, slide number three. Uh, okay, and just you, Kevin, just a thumbs up. Can you see the slides as I move them? I Thank can't, you. no, I don't have any video. Thank you. Okay, so slide three. Yep, yeah, thanks. So you should have a flyer, a STEM flyer that I sent out earlier today. I don't know if it's on your hub but it kind of outlines the strategic plan in a more visual way. Uh, and it should kind of match this slide number three with the vision statement at the top and the goals and then the pathways. And so these are cross cutting things. And so we actually have um, five interagency working groups working to address uh, several of these. So the four pathways, we have four working groups, and then we have one focused on increasing diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, and I don't want to spend a ton of time here because I think you're familiar according to your leadership team there. Um, but I wanted to bring these to attention because we'd like to have a discussion with you in your breakout areas related to these because we really want to better understand um, what you're thinking in these areas and how we can be helpful and and really better connect this to your work. So um, I think I'll leave it there so that we have time and go to slide number four with Carol. Carol? Thank you. 
Sorry about that. Um, so I am currently at the Smithsonian Institution. This is my 16th year there, although it was broken up by my time at the US Department of Education. And these agencies that you see in front of you represent a handful. I think there's 14, 14 15 different agencies, um, 18 different agencies that are represented. And each of these agencies contributed to the development and some capacity of that strategic plan. And I was one of the folks who had the opportunity to contribute. And we also collected information, as you know, from the field. But um, just wanted to let you know that when you see the acronyms on the next page, that you'll understand that each of those acronyms represents a different agency that's in front of you. So this particular chart is in the Federal STEM Education Strategic Plan. And it was basically what um, you just heard Cindy talk about. In terms of each of the pathways, each pathway then is broken up into objectives. And each agency that's listed at the top here was required to basically say, over the next five years during the implementation of the strategic plan, here's what we are committing to working on as an agency. And many of them also mapped out key federal actions that meant that they would also build financial resources into their grant programming to support each of these objectives. So for example, develop and enrich strategic partnerships is made up of three objectives, foster STEM ecosystems, and we're actually using the term now STEM education ecosystems to be very specific that we are not talking about the uppercase E STEM ecosystems from TIES, we are talking about ecosystems that are focusing specifically on STEM education and not necessarily STEM solely workforce development. So fostering STEM ecosystems that unite communities, increase work-based learning and training through educator-employer partnerships, and blending successful practices across the learning landscape. In terms of the pathway engaging students where disciplines converge, we're talking about convergence, transdisciplinary learning, but also about advancing innovation and entrepreneurship education, making mathematics a magnet, and encouraging transdisciplinary learning. So when you see that term, either transdisciplinary learning or convergence later on, when we go into the breakout groups, that's where this came from, bringing all these domains together, even beyond the STE and M. And then finally, building computational literacy is really about the set, these objectives of promoting digital literacy and cyber safety, making computational thinking an integral element of all education. And we don't just mean in terms of the use of a computer, but we're using computational thinking broadly and expanding digital platforms for teaching and learning. And I think that's especially important today. I'm gonna to turn it back over to Cindy. So if you look at yeah. these, this column, if you see a dot, that means that that particular agency, and this is the Department of Commerce, committed to, over the next five years, to making sure that their key federal actions and their requests for proposals would build language in to support funders or opportunities in this to, to meet that particular objective. If there's a blank, like you see here with Department of Labor, Department of Labor only agreed to that one, meeting that one particular objective. Yeah, and that's, so that, yeah, thank you. And that slide is going to be updated uh, because on the next slide, Carol, uh, the progress update, we are working on a new progress report right now that will have an updated chart. But even more importantly, I think to you, it will lay out all federal STEM education programs in alignment to the three goals that you saw earlier, along with uh, four of the pathways. So I think that will be helpful in thinking about where to pursue funding from. Um, and there should be more agencies on this dot chart because I do not think there's 18 there, but we've been working really hard to get a, more representation. So I think I hopefully that will have more uh, agencies with more dots for you to look at. Um, and just to let you know, in, in fiscal year 2019, there were $3.2 billion spent on 125 programs across 18 federal agencies and departments in STEM education, which is pretty significant. Um, and so um, we'll, we don't have the FY20 data yet, but that will be included in the progress report. So you'll see that uh, in May, hopefully, possibly early June, if it gets delayed uh, just due to the current state of events. Um, 
But one thing I really wanted to point out to you is that we are going to be looking for information from stakeholders across these topic areas that Carol just uh, mentioned here on this other slide. So you are a really great group um, to you know, provide some input uh, or individuals that can provide some input. So we will be sending uh, C-cubed some information about that when it when it's released but it's not it's not there yet it'll be on the federal register website but it will look into things like more information about convergence as carol just talked about stem ecosystems uh strategic partnerships and uh in diversity and inclusion in stem and then the third thing there on that progress update is the development of an online federal stem education resource so we're looking into a place where you can go to a one-stop shop and find whatever resources you need from across the federal government for STEM education. So that's something that we've committed to and we're working on, and there will be some information in the RFI that will ask for feedback. But I did share with your leadership team this week or last that you know, I, I'm, I would like to have a few of you in roundtables. We're gonna have some conversations with some stakeholder groups coming up if you're interested, you could let um, Maya or uh, Megan or Kevin know, and I'd be happy to, to take some uh, names as suggestions if you're interested. But really thinking about how that's structured, uh, what does it feature, what, what tools on it would be really helpful to stakeholders. Um, because in thinking about teachers and their time, they just don't have time to search everywhere, but it'd be great if they had one place to, to shop. I do have another uh, bullet that's not on here because it literally is fresh off the press, but I did want to let you know um, that, as you may know, France Cordova, the NSF director, uh, yesterday was her last day at NSF, and today, just about two hours ago, it was announced that Calvin Drogmeyer, the current director of OSCP, will be serving as acting director of the National Science Foundation until the new director can be confirmed by the Senate. So I did want to pass that along to you as a very uh, big update here in the DC area and just let you know. So Carol, we're going back to the small groups. Do you want to take this slide? Sure. Like so what we thought we would do um, is we've we've come up with four sets of questions that are in the Google Doc that I sent to you. So you would have to find one that meets meet your group. And this is the first time I would ever do this, so I'm hoping that this works. But we have come up with four different questions thanks to input from Maya and others, um, Megan, um, who helped us think about these four pathways that we talked about and trying to collect, trying to give you a chance to talk about it, to record your conversation in terms of notes, and then to just share it with each other. The notes will not be shared with Office of Science and Technology Policy or the Smithsonian. This is really um, to benefit each of you, and you certainly um, will help us in terms of your thinking when you report out. So we have four questions. One is around convergence. Uh, one is around computational literacy. The other is around strategic partnerships. And then we're asking a fourth question, which is around online federal STEM education resources, like what type of web-based resources would you hope to find on this federal STEM education website that Cindy mentioned? Um, so I'm gonna stop the sharing of the slides for just a second. Um, I hope I can do this. And I think Meg Welcome back, everyone. Um, that was a hard stop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the Zoom, the Zoom meeting does kind of put a hard stop in there. It'll give you a 60 out. seconds, and then you're just booted out. Um, if there's anyone who wants to take the risk of talking over someone, which I think is just fine in this environment, and share any key thoughts from your groups, we'd love to hear. Um, Megan might have further, Megan or Carol or Cindy might have further insights as to how to structure that share out, but that's, uh, we can start there. 
Yeah, I, I, I think that just if, if we don't mind finding somebody from group one or group, um, was the other, the other one that was equivalent, group one and group five, who might want to talk? I know we, there wasn't a lot of time, but anything in terms of convergence? Uh, so I'll just go ahead. Uh, we were kind of like in mid thought and conversation when we were zoomed out of our room. But basically, uh, I, I would point to something that I forgot who said it, but um, it, it was around the wording of the question where it we thought that um, it should be how does everything integrate and be driven by science as opposed to the other way around. Because when we try it the other way, then it becomes the reading about it and watching it as opposed to doing it. And so we were kind of in mid thought around how to do that when we, and I'm, I'm not using that as an excuse, but <laughs> the, the reality is, is that's basically something that everybody struggles with. Yeah. Is there anybody else from the convergence group that wants to from the other convergence group that wants to add? Hey, Jenny. Hi. So I'll add, I mean, we also ran out of time, so we didn't talk about a lot of stuff, but we did talk about the IB model quickly, um, that it is, it is, can be applied to this. And also I mentioned, and I think, and Tanya agreed that you know, maybe we should start with processes. So for an exa a good example would be using argumentation or discourse and train our teachers like how to apply that across disciplines. And that way we're talking about something that's a method, not content. So we don't have to integrate and plan curriculum. We're talking about, you know, teach them how to use argumentation like the argumentation toolkit for example that came up in my mind because you could apply the argumentation toolkit across disciplines so anyway that was most of what we talked about we kind of got caught and then tanya said and i agree that um we all kind of agreed that it starts with us we have to model that and that would be true also for pd so yeah. that was pretty interesting. No, I mean, I think that's an important point, Jenny, that already this science education community is being um, tasked with thinking about convergence, about transdisciplinary learning, because we're being asked to think about science, technology, engineering, math as a cohesive whole. Um, but, and that's challenging enough. Uh, but I think this community does that really well. I think in addition, you're saying the idea is also how do we take processes like argumentation that cut across different domains or disciplines and also use that as an approach to transdisciplinary learning? I think that's really, really smart. Um, I, and I be, wanted to say, Carol, I wanted to say too that I really like that idea. I hadn't thought of that as a former math teacher. I think that kind of training for me, me as a math teacher would have been incredibly helpful because, you know, it does cause students to think more and process more about what they're doing uh, versus following steps. So thank you for that input, appreciate it. Kat, um, I wanna turn back just to the facilitators just for a second. I, I know that it's 3.02, so I'll ask this question of Megan or others, Kevin. Um, there are three more groups obviously that we'd like kind of high level share out, but I also wanna be mindful of you and your time. We might not get to all three. I'd say give it about two more two more minutes and if people can do a, a, just a quick thought, I think we can do it. Okay, that thanks. Um, so the next group was computational literacy. Uh, maybe somebody from group two or group six. A quick Someone thought from, from group six was that there's still a lot to be done, especially with science and computer science connections. Um, I can't remember this person's name, but from South Carolina, they did mention that they were doing some work along these lines that could be shared out. And uh, lots of computer science happening in states, but the connections of science are still a little bit slim. Okay. And then I think the other thing too from group two um, was that 
the definition of computational literacy is not just aligned with computer science, but it's also the kind of thinking that happens across disciplines in which you're identifying a problem, analyzing the data within that problem, trying to come up with a solution. So that if you look in the federal STEM education plan, we did a very, I think it was really important that we tried to define it as a more broadly, it is certainly aligned with computer science, but also more broadly across disciplines. Um, and maybe one last one where the someone from the strategic partnerships, which is group three or seven. I can try to give a real quick summary. Um, we were talking about ecosystems and partnerships underneath that in particular. I think there's still a lot of kind of latent potential around coordinating formal ed and informal um, science ed. Um, and so we were talking about, you know, the recommendation from the NGSS uh, implementation guide around using framework as a guiding structure for those conversations. And some of the issues coming up for groups that are doing that is around decision making processes around those learning goals and um, around just like the need for technical capacity building within informal institutions. And that seems like an ongoing thing. And I'll stop there. Yeah, absolutely. So we just want to say thank you um, to you, of course. Um, if you have any questions about the federal STEM strategic plan, or you have any information, anything that you want to share with us about how you're using the federal STEM strategic plan in your community, or whether you're seeing any implementation of some of these strategies or pathways in your community, if you could share them with us, I think we would certainly appreciate it. Cindy? Yeah, thank, yeah, thank you all. Um, our contact information is on the last slide, so feel free to reach out on email. i uh, be happy to answer any questions or hear from you. And then when the RFI and um, the request, or the RFI goes out, I'll make sure CS Cubed has it. And uh, again, if, if you're interested in working with us a little bit on the the federal stem website or online resource we'd love to consider you for participating in a roundtable so thank you again for your time and for all that you do every day to help teachers and students thank you kevin thank you thank you carol and cindy and thank you jody um wonderful information and lots of work to be done certainly um and just a reminder that uh, we don't all have to get it done tomorrow and it's not going to be getting done in the next few weeks in, in, in my world at all. So um, anyway, uh, lots of things that we're, we're all thinking about and working on, but we've got to be mindful of taking care of ourselves in the midst of this craziness too. Um, so yeah, that's, that's always a concern with digging into rich, meaty stuff like this that I just want to go crazy with is that I've got to step back and realize I don't at all have the mental capacity for that right now. Um, so thank you all. We, I think it's really important to get up and do a quick stretch always. Um, we've been going for a little over an hour. So even though our, our general meeting, our membership meeting that we do each year is going to be a little bit squished even further, I do want to give everybody a chance for, for their needs and to, to stretch a little bit. And so we'll be back in five minutes on the dot at 2.12, we'll get going again. <laughs>